Hello, I'm Yvette Torres, and welcome to the Road to Recovery 2010, a showcase of events. More than one in five Americans suffer directly or indirectly from the disease of addiction, and the impact is felt in every sector of every community. Fortunately, lives are saved every day through addiction treatment and recovery services, and the support individuals in recovery receive from their friends, families, co-workers, and their entire community. People in recovery and those who help them to reclaim their lives is the focus of National Alcohol and Drug Addiction Recovery Month. Each day, an estimated 20 million people in long-term recovery prove that recovery works. They are employed, have families, pay taxes, vote, and volunteer in their communities. These are Americans who have reclaimed their lives and are now giving back. This is the very spirit and nature of Recovery Month. The efforts of thousands of individuals throughout the country yielded more than 900 events nationwide supporting the 2010 theme, Join the Voices for Recovery, now more than ever. Recovery Month promotes the benefits of substance use and mental health disorder treatment and recovery for individuals, their families, and their communities. It recognizes the contributions of treatment providers and promotes the message that behavioral health is an essential component of health services, that prevention works, and that treatment is effective. People can and do recover. This year's Recovery Month theme is now more than ever. and reminds us how much has been accomplished in these very exciting and challenging months but how much we need to focus on a wide range of issues. Our principal focus on Recovery Month is celebrating recovery. Uh, some of you today are celebrating your own recovery uh, by sharing your stories with others. So I applaud your willingness to take the message of recovery to those who need to hear it. You continue to be one of our most powerful tools. What began as a small and very good idea has grown into a national, mainstream, sustained, and systematic public education and support effort, all focused on the message that people recover. That message is just as relevant for people with mental disorders as it is for substance use disorders, and I am very pleased to have SAMHSA's Center for Mental Health Services participating in this year's activities along with CSAT and CSAP, as we call them. Getting the message of recovery right is critical because people take action based on what they hear and see and most importantly, what they experience. Experience shapes our knowledge, our values, our attitudes, our beliefs, and our action. I have this wonderful job in which uh, the drug problem uh, is an equal opportunity problem. It doesn't really care about sex or race or ethnicity. And you know what? The drug problem doesn't care whether it has a D after it or an R after it or any other party affiliation. This is a national problem. We have to work much harder and we should take this, this report that SAMHSA did, should take this report for the wake-up call for which it is. Wow. The National Recovery Month press conference here at the National Press Club. Exciting, exciting opportunity. Um, I'm very familiar with the press. Believe it or not, I received a little press uh, a few times in my act of addiction. You laugh, but it's true. Uh, but I think the important thing is now I'm getting press as a result of my recovery, about sharing my recovery story with others. This annual event is so important because in addition to alerting Americans about the dangers and trends of drug abuse, we must also educate them about the reality of recovery. Having people like me who have been through the trials of addiction and found recovery, telling our stories, it's an important part of broadening social, social understanding and building broad public support for our cause. This is the 21st annual observance of National Alcohol and Drug Addiction Recovery Month, and Faces and Voices of Recovery is honored to be able to share this day and this lunch with you. Uh, we're really grateful, as a matter of fact, that you've taken the time to uh, be with us 
And as you'll hear throughout the program, the theme for today's luncheon is Our Stories Have Power. As people in recovery, as family members, friends and allies. For more than 20 years, I managed to look pretty good on the outside, but inside I was drowning in fear, loneliness, chaos, and just plain hopelessness. No amount of alcohol could fill that black hole that was right here. My recovery journey has been nothing short of amazing, filling me with peace, hope, love, and most important, purpose. In short, it's been a life beyond my wildest dreams. My four children have found their own pathways to recovery, and their children, my six grandchildren, I'm proud to say, are addiction-free. It looks like the cycle has been broken in my family. So our stories have power. My story has power. Uh, the more that policymakers, our neighbors, and friends, and employers understand and know that we can and do get well, the more people will seek help that they and their loved ones need in order to recover. Everyone has a right to recover from addiction and to find a life in the community. As we leave here today celebrating the 21st anniversary of the National Alcohol and Drug Addiction Recovery Month, let's rededicate ourselves to using our stories to speak with one voice about the reality of recovery and build strong, recovery-committed communities across the country. Your stories and efforts are more important than before. Gaining access to treatment and peer and other recovery support services doesn't mean that people will seek them. You will help them seek them. You will help professionals in primary care and, uh, and other aspects of the health care delivery system address the issue. You need to continue your efforts to keep the story of recovery out there, both within your communities and within, your, within the governmental organizations. When we address addiction from a recovery aspect, we must take a holistic approach to truly assist an individual seeking long-term recovery. We must address the issues of education, employment, and most importantly, family and community wellness. Mental illness and substance abuse are health care conditions. And as health care conditions, people should expect to get better. Just like you and I would go to our health care provider, we expect to get better. Maybe not cured, but get better. And people should hope that that's the case. And too often in the past, that was not the message we gave. The second piece, and the one that I think played a more role, is that the input of individuals and families in care is essential to understanding what is best for the service system. And how great it is to be with so many faces and voices of recovery, to see so many of you here today Today uh, is a day for us to celebrate. Uh, today we celebrate all people in recovery. We celebrate the many blessings and the great joys of recovery. And I want to thank all of you who worked with Senator Kennedy and Senator Domenici, as well as Patrick Kennedy and me, to pass the mental health and treatment and, and addiction treatment equity act two years ago. Believe me, your 10,000 phone calls made a huge difference. And thank you from the bottom of my heart for your effort to pass that legislation. We did it. Working together, we did it. America is a country built from diverse people coming together. When millions of Americans stand up together to make a difference in their community, they speak with one voice and lives are forever changed. Recovery Month is a great example of this collective unity. In 2010, more than 900 events held throughout the country were posted on the Recovery Month website. There were walks, runs, fairs, concerts, picnics, art displays, educational events, motorcycle rides, 
baseball games, and many other types of events that reached millions of Americans. Individuals touched by addiction and now healed through recovery stood together in support of one another, showing that there is hope and that recovery is possible. I'm very proud of this collaboration, but more importantly, you too should be proud. Your work and commitment to make Recovery Month a success is remarkable. I'd like to thank all of the Recovery Month planning partners for their partnership and leadership, as well as the many volunteers, friends, and families of the recovery community who made these events possible. We're at Recovery Day here at Roger Williams Park in Providence, Rhode Island, and it's the state celebration of Recovery Day for people with mental illness and addictions. It's a wonderful time for all of our clients and staff to come out and be part of the larger community. It's just a wonderful day for people to come out and share their stories of recovery, and it's a very hopeful, fun time for people. We started actually eight years ago holding a uh, recovery event in Rhode Island. It's a way in which we give a voice to people in recovery. It's a way for us to tell people there is hope, that treatment does work. There's entertainment and speakers, the bands are playing and clients are having a really great time and we're meeting with politicians and other mental health providers. These types of events are important to highlight. It's, it's important because we're educating the public about both mental health issues and substance abuse issues. And we're also, by holding these types of events, we're also working to reduce the stigma associated with mental health or uh, drug and substance abuse issues. This year, we're tying it into Water Fire. We're taking the light of remembrance from here out into the general public, out into Water Fire, the 20,000 people that are there, to basically say, each of us is important, each of us has a voice, and this issue is important. It raises a level of uh, awareness to have an event such as this associated with Water Fire, which has a great reputation. We took it out of an indoor facility because we wanted to give the message that we're not hiding, that the face of recovery needs to be out in the open. We need to dispel the myth and the stigma of substance abuse and mental illness. We are always looking to help people improve the quality of their lives and recovery is not necessarily a straight line process for most people and we try to provide as much encouragement for people as possible. I think it's a huge success. I mean, I've been here each year that they've done it. The numbers grow. This particular event is gaining momentum each year. Stigma still exists in the world and the more events that we have like this and bring mental health issues into the forefront, the more people People understand that our consumers are just like everyone else. This is our 10th annual walk and um, this is clearly our biggest annual walk and um, it has been growing momentum each year. The first year we had a hundred people showed up and so we're really gratified that now, this year, we have probably over 11,000 who have come. Today's event is about recovery and uh, demonstrating to the public and to ourselves that recovery is possible. If we want to advance our cause, uh, which is making it possible for more people to get the help that they need so that they too can recover, we need to really continue events like this and show people the importance of uh, recovery uh, in, in our community. I think people in early recovery have an opportunity especially to see um, the magnitude of the recovering community and the power uh, that's involved. Who knows recovery benefit? Everybody! Everybody! Who knows recovery benefit? It's a beautiful thing when this many people that live the lifestyle that we all have lived and decided to make a change in their lives and turn their life all the way around and try to be the best people that we can be. From what I understand of it, it's working. I mean, it speaks for itself. Look, look around you. Events like this, you see other providers, it reinvigorates your mission and your vision for a, a wonderful future without having to use um, substances. A healthy future. When you're in your addiction, you kind of feel like you're alone and there's nobody there to help you. 
but something like today kind of shows you that you're not alone and there is help out there and there's a lot of people that are just like you. In honor of Recovery Month, the Drug and Alcohol Consortium held a recovery celebration. The event started with a motorcycle ride in Fort Wayne, Indiana and ended with a day of fun activities. Participants also enjoyed bingo, music, food and fellowship. Recovery advocates in New Orleans, Louisiana joined together for a red carpet event premiering the documentary film Highway to Healing, Rethinking Addiction in Louisiana. Following the screening was a red carpet recovery walk saluting all the courageous members of the Greater New Orleans and Baton Rouge recovery communities. The event was held at the Old U.S. Mint, a Louisiana State Museum. Don Farm hosted their 37th anniversary jamboree in Ypsilanti, Michigan. The event featured activities for all ages, including live music, hay rides, pony rides, live and silent auctions, and tours of the 74-acre farm. The jamboree provided an opportunity to have a great time while raising awareness of the tremendous power of recovery. Recovery Schools and Friends in St. Paul, Minnesota held a kickball tournament with live music and fun for everyone. The event was held at Como Park, where attendees enjoyed a nice day outdoors playing kickball and were able to celebrate recovery together with games, music, speakers, and information booths. The Partnership for a Healthy Durham held a block party for the entire Durham, North Carolina community at Durham Central Park. This free event included food, diverse entertainment, games, and activities for all ages. Information was also provided about substance use disorders and treatment options, and the inspiring stories of members of the local recovery community. The Northern Ohio Recovery Association invited all bikers down to the Cleveland Metro Park Zoo for a recovery ride. A three-tier trophy was given to one lucky winner for best bike. The other participants were given a t-shirt, patch, and admission to the zoo. Also included was food, fun, and fellowship. Hundreds of Oregon and Washington residents celebrated recovery from alcohol and drug addiction by joining hands across the Interstate 5 bridge connecting the two states. During this annual event, participants celebrated recovery with ceremonies on both the Vancouver and Portland sides of the Columbia River. Citizens gathered together in York, Pennsylvania to celebrate recovery with a day at the ballpark. During the York Revolution versus Lancaster Barnstormers ball game, the recovery community joined together and formed the first human chain around the stadium in honor of those affected by the disease. There were fun activities along with live music, all-you-can-eat hot dogs, nachos, and soda plus the ball game. Recovery Schools and Friends in Madison, Wisconsin held a kickball tournament and art show for their community. Attendees were able to create their own art masterpieces as well as look at other paintings, listen to stories of recovery, and enjoy each other's company. Community members spread the word of recovery by wearing t-shirts promoting recovery every Friday during September. Getting the recovery voice out there is an important goal of friends and neighbors in Rock Springs, Wyoming. The Celebrate Recovery Walk and Rally in Lansing, Michigan commemorated the successes of those recovering from addictions to alcohol and other drugs. Participants joined together and marched to the state capitol for a celebration featuring guest speaker and advocate Kitty Dukakis. Recovery friends and advocates in Honolulu, Hawaii participated in a charity recovery walk and 5K run. Following the run, attendees enjoyed music, 
food, popsicles, volleyball, and fellowship. Members of the Daytona Beach, Florida community celebrated recovery with a motorcycle ride, entertainment, testimonies, and information on supportive services. The free celebration started with a bike ride to the beautiful Halifax River for a Dare Extreme Stunt Rider show with a prevention message to young people. Also included in the event was a talent contest, toys for kids, food, and fun. Mojave County Substance Abuse Treatment Education and Prevention Partnership and the Kingman Area Meth Coalition hosted a parade walk to support recovery in Kingman, Arizona. Shirts were given out to all walkers and there was an opportunity to carry signs promoting treatment. YNIA Women in Recovery held a special recovery camp out for women and children. There were activities for women, teens, children, and families as a whole. A fun and sober time was had by all. Well, my passion is really uh, advocacy around treatment and recovery issues. Uh, I've had the, the wonderful uh, career over the past 16, 17 years of being a direct service provider, being a treatment and recovery advocate, uh, to heading up a large advocacy organization to actually working inside right now. And my primary purpose is to make sure that the next person, that person that's still out there using now, when they do have this aha moment, that the system is ready to welcome them and to embrace them and support them as they begin their journey on recovery. You know, working as a documentary filmmaker with youth, you know, has taught me a lot. And I've learned a lot, you know, just in the process of of giving back and, and educating myself to other pathways to recovery. You know, I had my experience, my personal experience in my recovery, but, you know, videotaping and, and capturing other stories has opened my mind to multiple pathways and different ways people recover from drugs and alcohol. I am so grateful, so, so grateful. Uh, I'm the mother of five children, and I'm also a person who had child welfare issues and substance use disorder issues at the same time. And when I look at my children and I see how important I am in their lives and um, what a difference my life is now and what an inspiration I am to them. I also have a ministry and my what I went through, we called it the test that has become the testimony. Hearing people, um, talking to people and seeing how amazed they are when I tell them my story and to be able to inspire them and know that I'm able to do that because I'm in recovery. To be able to be there for my mother who's 92 years old and to have her depend on me now and to know that she can depend on me, that I will show up, is, it's a wonderful feeling. When I began getting sober that I had to understand that I was the only one getting sober. There were thousands of people like myself, so there was not a problem with the, the, the stigma part of it or, or letting the world know who I was. And the more I did that, and that's also a process of helping me stay sober, reminding myself of where I came from, where I've been, where I am now, repeating that very, very often through the course of a day by helping others or by talking on the radio or what I'm doing right now, it keeps it green in my mind of where I am and where I could be. And so it, it really, really acknowledges in, in my mind that I'm doing okay today, that I'm fine today. If I keep doing what I'm doing. What recovery has brought to me is an ability to take it to the next level and, and be vocal about it, not be ashamed, you know, not hide behind a wall because you're afraid that, oh, well, God, they're going to know that I'm a recovering addict. Well, I like to say that I'm in long-term recovery as opposed to an addict or an alcoholic because there's more positive sounding. Because people still run with, well, addict, ooh, bad. Alcoholic, ooh, troublemaker. But long-term recovery has a nice twist to it. And if I can't give it back, I'll lose it. How I pay it forward is every day I have a recovering family. My wife is in long-term recovery. 
We have two children, 19 and 17, that we have to role model today, not tell them how to live, but show them how we lead our lives. They've never seen us pick up a drink or a drug in our life. Uh, they think recovery is an asset rather than a liability. I sponsor 17 men in recovery and try to role model who I am to them. And, uh, and now I'm involved with InTheRooms.com and we have over 80,000 members that uh, I'm grateful to for being on our site and we're growing every day by hundreds of people. And um, it's not only getting people together, keeping them connected, but we're saving lives every day. As you can see, thousands of Americans participated in a variety of Recovery Month activities in 2010. I hope this show inspires you to organize a Recovery Month event next September. Your continued involvement in organizing events and activities in September 2011 is critical. You can get started right now by going to recoverymonth.gov and becoming familiar with the 2011 materials. Recovery Month events come in all shapes and sizes. One thing they all have in common is that they all bring a sense of hope that people can live healthy, happy, and productive lives. By focusing on prevention, treatment, and recovery, we address the need to achieve overall health and well-being for all Americans. For a copy of this program or other programs in the Road to Recovery series, call SAMHSA at 1-800-662-HELP or order online at recoverymonth.gov and click Multimedia.